Uh, my name is Maria Alexeva, and I will present you uh, our study done with uh, Yuri Shterov and Andrei Mechikov. And mainly it is ba based on investigation of the underlying neurocognitive processes and associated anatomical structures of linguistic theories and uh, their particular uh, constituents like xeromorphism. So how it started. We know that uh, linguistic theories uh, do not always incorporate the knowledge of neural language processing in their um, theories. So in most cases, we don't know if some uh, postulated constituents uh, really exist and proceeded in our mind. For example, uh, here is a so-called null constituent it is described as a sign that have a particular meaning but not embodied in sounds by Charles Bali. And what we know from, what can we extract from this definition is that uh, this constituent has a meaning but no phonological representation. Uh, here are several types of such constituents. For example, ellipses, VH movements, and P movements, and more local elements like uh, zero morphemes. So the first three of them are more complex and have a particular overt reference and or antecedents. And uh, as it was shown on the example of VH movements, uh, is that uh, there is no syntactic processing under them, but only contextual parsing. But on the other hand, we have more local elements, uh, zero morphemes that um, mm, could uh, have some morpho syntactical processing under them. And as you can see, the example of zero morphem, uh, um, universal grammar uh, say that there is an overt marker for a singular number on the verb. And in this case, they post it postulates the existence of the same but covered one for the plural number marking. Uh, so in this case, it will be zero morphem or zero affix. And the, the question is whether the, uh, our brain represents zero morphem pro and how it is done. So this is the goal of our study. And uh, not so long time ago, an fMRI study was uh, made and the uh, uh, results showed uh, a significant activation of Broca's area for zero inflected conditions. And the authors of this article, uh, they said, said that this activation is an evidence uh, of existence of zero FX representation. But this result has uh, some other explanations and some limitations. First of all, it's uh, not an argument for the zero effect processing as such, but it's an indication of standard parsing of the stimuli, including access to other morphological units like STEM. And the uh, choice of the design, the design of the study, uh, visual task with attentional production. It cannot address uh, highly automatic and uh, passive processing that the zero morphem question involves. So taking into account these uh, limitations, we um, decided to study this topic and use uh, non-attend design with visual destruction. So our experiment included Russian language material because uh, this language is inflectionary rich one and with good examples of zero morphem, for example, uh, masculine gender agreement. Uh, for Russian, it's uh, covered FX and uh, other type, uh, other gender like uh, feminine will be uh, uh, overt, uh, overtly uh, presented with uh, our ethics. Uh, so uh, we have uh, six conditions. Uh, single verb uh, presented in two forms, uh, masculine and feminine, and uh, pronoun verb phrases with he or she pronoun and verb form agreed or disagreed in gender with it.
with them. So in this case, we have an example of zero morphine presented in verb forms with masculine marker, and in the opposite to them, the overt feminine ones. Uh, we the, these phrases and uh, single verb forms uh, were recorded in two voices and were made of 10 different verbs and we repeated them 10 times so each participant uh, heard uh, 1200 trials uh, yes as i said uh, we used non-attended design with visual distraction so the procedure looked like uh, mm, uh, passive auditory representation of the discussed uh, stimuli and silent film as a distractor uh, during which we recorded an EEG activity from 128 electrodes. And 25 participants took part in the experiments and we are going further for analysis. Uh, we use cluster-based random permutation analysis uh, for that. And first, we try to look at the masculine and feminine agreement mask markers together and compare them. But it showed only overall acoustic differences. So we we'll, um, try to look uh, directly to the conditions with zero morphine. In, the, in our case, it's masculine marker. So uh, we analyze two effects, masculine difference effect and zero morphine priming effect, which means that uh, if we will find the evidence of uh, masculine uh, affects, uh, which uh, is primed by the preceded pronoun, um, we will see the early automatic morphosyntactic processing of it uh, and the uh, compatible uh, component with it, uh, it's ELAN. Uh, so uh, this will support the existence of zero morphine processing. And uh, here are the results. On the screen, you can see the waves uh, from single warp conditions condition and conditions with he and she pronoun all in masculine forms so always uh, condition with the he pronoun will be always uh, correct and with she pronoun always incorrect so what we can see we see the overall difference between all three conditions and uh, the main thing is that the most activation goes for the single warp and uh, neither correct nor violated condition uh, reach the level of this uh, single warp activation. And But why did this happen? This happened due to additional difficulties in finding correct gender mappings for, this ca for the cases uh, where uh, there is no object of subject of priming, so there is no preceded, uh, preceded uh, pronoun. So for the cases with um, a single verb form. Uh, and uh, so, okay, yeah, if we will co look closer to the correct and uh, violated conditions, uh, with zero affix, um, if we think that uh, zero morphem exists, and uh, then we sh the, there should be preactivation of it as a standard uh, uh, for other affixes. And uh, so this uh, will uh, appear at early stages. So the differences between correct and violated conditions will appear early. And here we can see the results of um, cluster analysis showing that um, there is uh, the onset of these differences occur re really early, around 200 milliseconds. And uh, moreover, we see the reduced activation for the conditions with correct agreement. And because um, uh, if you look at the topology, uh, of this effect, uh, you can see a frontal and frontal central distribution. So this uh, <clears throat> this uh, effect, uh, 
this activity, difference in activity that we found is compatible with Elan component, as we said before. And uh, so summing up all together the results, here you can see the uh, scale of activation distribution among conditions and the main outcomes are uh, the reduced responses for the correct phrases as opposed to the either single verbs or agreement violations and the additional processing difficulties in finding correct gender mappings for single verb condition, which uh, result in high activation of it. So together that will give us the evidence of zero morphine priming. Uh, and um, of course we need more control conditions and study other representations of zero morphine in Russian and maybe some other languages, but this is like the first uh, main step in studying zero morphic processing. Yes, and this is all. I think if you have any questions, please 